Alright everyone, welcome back to another video of Late Late Customs. Behind me right here we have my dad's caddy and today we will be loading it. It's a big sack. It's a bit too high. I did have cut springs in. Um, well, at the current moment I still have it in which I will be removing. And I will be installing a set of sleeve overs in the front suspension with extended top mounts. And a set of drop blocks right here all supplied from Side Hustle Garage. On that note, I would just like to give a big shout out to Side Hustle Garage for supplying me with all these components right here. If you need any of these components right here, I'll link all the details in the description down below as well as on the screen. Don't hesitate to contact him because currently... I'm going to So, I'm extremely happy. I'm very, very excited. I haven't dealt with coilovers. Well, I haven't dealt with sleepovers in quite some time. Today will be my first in a very, very long while um, installing sleepovers. I've installed sleepovers, well, I think a few years back in my yellow car when it was still owned by the previous owner. And I didn't really have such a great experience with it. But with apparently with the extended top mounts and the sleepovers, it's apparently a very, very good combination because with sleepovers, this is a universal loading kit or adjustable, universal adjustable loading kit. If you don't have, well, if you can't get coilovers for your car, contact side hustle garage because they can hook you up with a set of sleepovers that needs to be modified to fit your suspension. And you will, well, I would say you almost guaranteed lose if you do, um, well, certain modifications on your shock. Maybe even it's not because I won't do any modifications whatsoever on my shock today. So sit back, relax, drop a like on this video to support the channel and today we will give you guys a full overview or a review actually on these uh, loading components for the Volkswagen Caddy we have right here. I initially wanted to go with uh, coilovers but um, I'm going to give the sleeveovers one last try and if I get to master this today, I did some research there are a few people that stated it is beable. Um, while you do have to make some sacrifices, specifically sacrifice some drive comfortability for some lows. And that's exactly to see, well, that's exactly what I'm going to check out today to see how much comfortability you're going to sacrifice for these sleeveovers to, well, lower your vehicle. Well, so, contact size of garage if you need any of these components right here. And other components as well because these do sell a lot of car accessories. But, Let's get started with this video. Let's start getting some work done in this talk. Enjoy today's video, guys. Just an update for everyone, uh, we are currently busy just drilling out these holes. As you can see they are quite circular, that one right here is not um, that circular but um, this one I got quite uh, accurate because the reason why I need to drill out these holes is because uh, they need to be the diameter of the chrome section of the shock tube. We need to be able to do this. Um, well, 
A few problems I came across with Sweeper was in the past was if you do not root out to this specific diameter of the chrome section of the shock, you will have issues where it will make a song per sit right there. You won't go past this point right here. And the moment you tighten the these tend to crack. So I know side hustle brass do offer the the metal uh, top patch is what they call it I think. So if you guys wanted to be extra safe you guys could do that. I think this will do um, I think this will still do a perfect uh, job in my application so I'm not really too much worried about it but yeah now we can get the sleeve overs on the only issue I think I might um, run into is this section right here so I probably need to grind off this section right here on both shocks and then we can move forward to um, while the installation process the reason why I need to grind off uh, this section well maybe to fit um, while the adjust the section with the thread on onto the section of the shock right here so we'll be putting it upside down in order to get some more lows so yeah let's get that shit up quick Well, let me show you guys how to install these uh, extended uh, top mounts. Well, I would say a top mount spaces is the right terminology. So, um, you just need to remove this lower section. It's technically placed as a, a nut, I guess. You remove this. What you need to do, you heat out the hole. I'm not sure what you call this specifically. You heat these out from the original topic, which is currently right here as this like there so you can uh, put a bolt through there so this will technically sit like this just with the bolt obviously through and then this bottom this bottom plate right here this plate right here that plate goes underneath the chassis or underneath the or at the bottom side of the strut tower that way you have strength from the top piece which you have the top plate right here and you have the bottom plate right here. I will show you guys quickly. Yeah, I have the mounting installed, so... Skiddy man over here, what a fast jam. Okay, okay, but uh, guys, so this is how the top one should look once you install it. Only thing I'm really not a fan of is seeing that bolt right there. You should have uh, maybe just had like a tube um, between, um, well, the top mount or the plate and the body just to strengthen uh, that section right there. But I'm gonna see how it works out. If um, anything false, I will keep you guys updated but you guys can see so the one plate is just under the top one right here bolt goes through we have the spacer right there and here at the bottom you guys can see here we have the strengthening plate with that um, well I would say engineered uh, nut type of thing right here I'm not entirely sure why it's engineered uh, well like that specifically unfortunately I don't have the, the answer for that but that is how it currently looks and once you have the sleeve over on your shock right here, as you can see I already got the side done, got that side done as well. Um, I got it adjusted on I think 30 uh, millimeters, so you're gonna see how that height is. You don't plat the drain. Hmm? You don't plat the drain. It's really not a plat the drain. No, you see, yeah. But we got it right there. That, that's the current height of the car tire, and it's busy tightening this side. But um, to prevent any rattles, definitely use these rubbers. It come with the packaging right there. I just use the thinner at the bottom and the thickest one on top. So that way you uh, avoid any rattles. The thinnest one at the bottom, guys. Not the thinner. Yo, the, th <laughs> the thinner one at the bottom. <laughs> the the thinnest one at the bottom. <laughs> Sinja, sorry. Uh, <laughs> my little bit of my English. Uh, Perfect, but we're going to see how this back is going to learn now. So what I can uh, tell you guys, we're going to see how the lows is in front. And that will deter, well, once, the, once we get the plates in on the rear, that will determine how low we will be going in front. So, this is not the final light in front. But yeah, Tyler. Cap and nut, man. Cap and nut, man. Cap and nut.
just finished this entire passenger side. That's the high current in front on the sleeves. That's not maxed out, by the way. And then here in the rear, this is the height with the 75 mm drop. Um, I checked out on the plate. Apparently, you get a 50 mm drop and a 75 mm drop. I went with the 75 mm drop, and you can currently see this is like a, a finger gap under weight or with loading. Because currently the the jack is um, all the jack is on the axle. So all the weight is on the axle and this is how the height will be once the puck is on the ground. I'm very very happy with it. Keep in mind once the canopy is going to be removed, um, it will raise up a little bit. Even when it's low to the ground now, it will raise up probably like a 5 mile I think. Um, but I'm very very happy with this height. Very very happy and once we get wheels on this puck, it's going to look amazing. So stay tuned, you guys will see a video in the future of a wheel reveal on this bucky. I'm really, really excited for that. But this far, I'm happy with the height at that side. So let me show you guys on this um, drop plate. It's not a space, sorry, on this drop plate. This is where you mount um, the drop plate to the axle where the current um, or drum is mounted to. You mount it on these six uh, holes right here. And then these six, or these uh, are six right here, so those right there, that, 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 and that, that right there is the 75 mm drop. And from here, that's the 50 mm drop. So you have two options, you can either drop the caddy or your caddy a 75 mm or 50 mm, and I went with the 75 mm. So um, if you're gonna go with the 50 mm, it probably would be like a finger and a half, two fingers uh, well, above the current height at the current time or higher. But comment down below which height you would choose, the 75 mil or the 50 mil. You guys know we gotta get the scary low, and that's the reason why we went with the 75 mil. Really, very really basic to install. You literally just need to remove the drum, which it has a 24 mil nut on. Get that removed. Keep in mind to drop the handbrake. Get the drum off. Remove the six bolts. That's keeping the drum to the axle. Get that removed. Slide in the spacer. For the, dro the drop plate, reverse everything, or the reverse install everything, and you are sorted. I can see you What are you doing? I can see you man. Do you want to go to the course? Oh, we are going to go to the course. Yes, we are going to go to the course. Do you want to go to the course? Yes. Do you want to go to the course? Yes. Do you want to go to the course? Yes. Do you want to go um, that drop plate right here. And keep in mind you do get hardware with it as well. I didn't mention that. But you get LNK hardware. It's nice and flat out so it like kinda like counter sinks into the drop plate. But, uh, it counter sinks like into the drop plate and that way you get like a nice flush area so that you can put the well drum on and you get these new amazing looking bolts with lockers in order to get the drum tightened to the drop it.
Gary is finally on the ground and I'm loving the height. It's exactly the height I wanted. Um, worth a set of 15s, it would look much better. I think it would probably be like a finger, finger and a half in the rear, which is exactly what I wanted. At the current time, the caddy is laying level. We just need to nosedive it a little, so I'm gonna drop it in front, I think worth either a 10 or 15 mil, and then we should be sorted. We're gonna have the perfect height. I really wish I could have fitted the wheel shield tonight, guys, but the guys will unfortunately have to wait for the wheel reveal. But, woo, just take a moment to appreciate that right there. Super, super excited. But we're gonna have a quick air break, Shinji. Air break, yeah. Yeah. Up you, KFC. Oh, yeah. Always, always. So we can set the bucket for one with the Kranz burger. It's almost like the cafeteria here, man. Easy cafeteria. So we're gonna eat quickly. And once we're done eating, we can get the front lowered and we can get this bucky wrapped up for the night.